guys, it's been a while between the holidays and going to basketball tournaments every weekend. I haven't really had time to film, but I'm here and I'm excited because we're going to be cooking again today. We're celebrating Laria's birthday. Technically, it's not till the spring, um, but I want to cook because I'm hungry. So I'm going to be talking about her favorite food, and that is an orenberry custard. Orange berries are made up, it's not a real thing. So I'm gonna be substituting gooseberry for my orange berries today. It's described in the book as an orange berry that grows on the bushes around her house. Sweet, maybe a little tart. So I've never made a custard and I'm really excited because I'm gonna be using a medieval recipe for mine. So I'm gonna talk about uh, what's gonna go into that. Also, everything is in grams and milliliters, so that's also been a fun math game. So the first thing is saffron. Um, I went down a rabbit hole when it came to that because I wasn't that familiar with saffron. And I might even write a blog about it because it's fascinating. Um, for those of you who don't know, saffron is the stigmas and, and um, styles of a flower, the crocus flower. So if you look at a flower and the little antennas that are inside of it, that's what saffron is. And there's only three strands of saffron per flower, and it's very labor intensive. They harvest them by hand. That's why it's so expensive. The primary grower of saffron is Iran, and they generally have one of the highest grades, but it's also grown in Spain, France, parts of Italy, and uh, India. So I have Persian saffron. Um, the other fun ingredient that I'm gonna talk about is double cream. Um, double cream is exclusive to the UK um, and it's made by centrifuging unhomogenized milk and basically the butter fat that comes off of that process is the double cream. In the US we have whipping cream which is 30% butter fat we also have heavy cream or heavy whipping cream, which is 36 to 38% milk butter fat. Double cream is 48%, so she's a little thicker. And uh, so this came straight from our friend in the UK. I'm going to start by making my pastry, and one of the most authentic ingredients of that is lard. Of course, I've never made, cooked with lard before, but I'm really excited to make this pastry because I had so much fun doing it last time. It was so delicious. So that's where I'm going to start. I have 225 grams of flour, which kind of measured out to roughly a cup and a quarter, cup and a half. And then I have 65 grams of butter, which was about half a stick. And then I have 40 grams of lard, which was like kind of like a big heaping tablespoon full. And then it says cold water to mix. So I'm guessing I'm just going to mix her up until I get a good flat consistency. Also, it didn't tell me if the butter should be cold or not, but based on my previous experience of making a crust, I'm guessing it was cold. Just refrigerated, it wasn't in the freezer. So then I'm just gonna add a little bit of water until I get like a dough-like consistency. Cold water, again, is the key I learned from previous experience. Also, it says that I could use um, butter instead of lard to make this vegetarian, but I was like, why would you wanna do that? We live in a medieval times, we need meat. So because I didn't have anyone explicitly telling me how much water to add to this, I ended up adding too much. So I had to recoup my losses with a little bit more flour. So I'm going to wrap this guy up and then put it in the fridge while we start on the filling. So for the saffron, again, it doesn't tell me how much, but I'm just going to do like a little pinch of it since it's so precious. Take a little pinch. Oh gosh, don't go crazy now. 
and it wants me to pulverize it. The exact words that it uses, by the way. Pulverize it. This is where you get to pretend you're an apothecary. In medieval times, making precious medicines. So now I'm going to take my pulverized dried saffrons and I'm going to soak it in two tablespoons of water until it's kind of a deep gold color which it's like immediately that's also another way to like gauge your saffron grade is by soaking it i learned again i went down a rabbit hole so just want to say it's a beautiful thing this is the part where i get to separate eggs and look like a complete dork because i can't really do it very well Okay, I don't want any judgment here. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I, I broke one. <laughs> broke an egg. This is like, there's really an art form to that. I will, I got some respect for pastry chefs. Also, do they sell just like egg yolks? Like, can you get just egg yolks for people like me? Okay, last one. Asking for a friend. Oh gosh, I broke that one too. I apologize to all people everywhere who make custards that I made such horrible mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to beat the eggs. In a little bowl and then I'm gonna start adding my other ingredients so I've got my double cream I actually I'm sad I ended up a little bit short on it I am supposed to be 350 mls I have 311 hopefully we we gonna be okay there also it just smells like straight up whipped cream and I'm going to add my 250 mls of milk which is about a half a cup 65 grams of white sugar and then i have a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt what's important i almost forgot i almost forgot my saffron water which is delicious looking I hope I added enough. Like I said, it didn't tell me how much, but you know, I feel like a pinch. I feel like if it's that expensive, if it's a very expensive ingredient, you don't want to use that much every that you know that often. So I think a pinch is safe. I'm just gonna whisk all this stuff together. Okay, my dough is chilling in the fridge for a little while, and now I'm gonna roll it out. It's a little bit um stickier than I'm used to. Hopefully I didn't somehow inadvertently mess something up because I had to convert and weigh things on a gram scale. But, you know, we're going to do this. So I'm going to roll out my dough for my pie. And then we're going to blind bake it, which I didn't know what that was. I never heard of it. Um, it's not baking with your eyes closed like my husband thought. Um, it's actually when you get the pie crust, you kind of cook it first because when you have a filling that's really soft and gooey like the custard it will actually make your pie crust too soggy it doesn't cook fast enough so they recommend that you bake the pie crust first so it stays nice and crunch crunchy and firm and delicious and i am preheating my oven at 200 degrees celsius which is 390 degrees fahrenheit or thereabouts i don't know if i Roll this out thin enough. It'll be fine. Okay, so how we blind bake is I'm going to line this with foil. put 
dry beans in the bottom of it to kind of weigh it down. And we're going to put it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. So mistakes were made. I did the 20 minutes with the beans at 390 degrees, but I was supposed to lower the temperature of the oven to 320 degrees, or excuse me, yeah, from 390 to 320, and bake it again for another eight minutes, but I forgot to lower the temperature. This is very doughy, so I don't know where I went wrong, but oh well. I'm going to go ahead and fill the dough with the filling, the custard filling, and then I'm going to bake that um, at 320 degrees for 45 minutes. Okay. Here comes my filling, and I hope it all fits because it really doesn't look very deep yeah it's like trying to trying to escape not stopping me from pouring it all in though okay into the oven for 45 minutes so I just took my custard out of the oven I looked it up a good way to tell it's done is the sides will be firm but the middle will kind of jiggle jiggle like it is. I also put, put a toothpick through the middle and it came out clean. So I think it is done. So I ended up actually needing to bake this for an hour until, because when I just did 45 minutes, it was too jiggly. But it looks, it looks beautiful. There it is. My custard with some gooseberries on top. I just want to point out, I'm pretty sure I screwed up the crust. It doesn't look all the way cooked. It look, I think it was just too thick. But let's see how it tastes. Look at jello. Let's see. Try some of the gooseberries. It's like, it's not as like thick and high like as I thought it was gonna be. It's really good. Dang, Laura, you have good taste. Yeah, the bottom of the crust is a little doughy still. Let's, let's taste this outside. That's good. So there's this really important Part in the rise of Riverstone where Laria goes back to Riverstone and she's a servant but there's a lot of the same staff there that used to be there and it's her birthday and they sneak her a contraband custard and she hurries off and it eats it in the library and Mister's like what's that and she's like it's a custard and she's like and just the way she like seductively or suggestively eats it. It's like the first time he actually looks at her like a woman and not just a friend or kid or whatever. So, if you know, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and eat the rest of this. Sorry it took so long to get this video out. We've been really busy. We've been sports balling and so I'll try to be a little bit more consistent and uploading every Saturday. Please like and subscribe. Follow us for books and nerd talk and more medieval cooking than you ever thought possible. Thank you so much.